her cries after 24 hours fling with Playboy racing driver. Her grand niece spattered across the headlines. Apparently, his checks bounced from here to high heaven. We lived here so quietly. Be still, you sir. You don't want Claire to hear. Thank heaven she stays in her room as much as she does these days. It would break her heart to know that her niece disgraced us. Helen, how could you? He has a police record. Six months for passing worthless checks. He knows you'll get Claire's money. There isn't the money. Quiet, Helen. Why doesn't she know? Heaven forbid. Is she still upstairs? Who wants to tip going around the house? I see you here. I don't care if she hears. I don't care who hears. Helen, there, you're too Good evening. Good evening, Mother. Edward, where's that daughter of yours? She, um, she's come for her holiday, Claire. Oh, has she? Is that why you're all shouting at her? Well, this isn't the only paper in the house. She's promised there'll be no further trouble. Uh, we've got a judge's order, you know, Mother. They're not allowed to meet. Yes, yes. Now, leave the room. What, Mother? Leave the room, please. I want to talk to my granddaughter. Claire, yeah, you're not well. When I I'll feel you. much better when my granddaughter and I have had a talk. Indeed. How long have you known him, Helen? Long enough. Mm. It says no more than 24 hours, it says here. And where is he waiting for you? I'm not going to tell you. Uh, Calais, it says. I've never been to Calais. Oh, you've never been anywhere. That's the trouble with you, isn't it? Don't you just love this? Something happening at last? You're very young. Oh, you don't understand. You've spent a day with him, and what do you know about him? I know how good he is. If he's so good, why has he been in so much trouble? Oh, he's changed. That's what I was trying to tell them. He's promised me. Changed because of you? Yes. Do you think you can change somebody? Oh, yes, if you love them. You wouldn't understand. Oh, I have my own life to live. If you do join him, you have to wait until the morning anyway. You mean I can go to him? You're free. Despite the judge order. I can go to him. Let us talk for a while and then, then you can decide. When were you last in this house, Helen? I can hardly remember. I know it was very quiet. You were 11 years old. And they took you upstairs to see me. I was in bed. And you were afraid to come near me. Yes. And finally, you said, why does everyone speak in whispers? And what did they tell you? Daddy told me that you were still mourning grandfather. They were so quiet because nothing happened here anymore. I was mourning something else as well. In a way, my own death. You see, Helen, I had met a man, and I tried to change him, too. Oh, 
I'd been married 17 years when your grandfather took ill. And I lost him after two terrible weeks. she was when I was here last school holidays. Tried everything to bring her out of herself. You know the plan we have. Now listen, I'll make the inquiries again. It's simply a matter of getting her on that train. Yes. I feel so bad about going back to school with her like this. I'll speak to her again, Edward, because you know she was saying only a few days ago how much your father enjoyed taking her to the continent. Poor Claire, she's lost without him. He was the one to organize things. It was such fun coming home on holiday. A mother was so carefree and gay, but now... Some months later, I was persuaded to go. For it was true, my grief was infecting my family like a disease. But then followed such weary months of traveling. I went to endless museums and listened to my footsteps on the polished floors of art galleries. I thought, I thought I might discover him in those places, the places where he went, where we had been together. But it was impossible, and now my life seemed meaningless. And then I was in Monte Carlo, where we had often holidayed together. But I was still alone, with the sun on my face as my only companion. I long to sit quite still. I long for death, but lacked energy to quicken its coming. <laughs> Madame Lester, Madame Lester, you remember we met in Florence. At the consulate, such a terrible reception. And now you are here in Monte Carlo. What a gay life for you, my dear. Christophe. You remember little Christoph in Florence? No, I... Uh, Chris, come here, you horrible boy. Oh, his manners get worse the whole time. Shake hands with the lady, Chris. Isn't he appalling? <laughs> but you know, Chris was bored in Florence. Statues bore him. So there were no casinos, poor child. He went into the Uffizi Gallery and asked where they kept the roulette tables. Really, Louise? That's true. <laughs> now we'll see some of you, my dear. Monte Carlo is delicious at this time of the year. All the young men from the north come south to the casino like wonderful little starlings. Isn't that right, Chris? Yes, Auntie. Can you imagine loving a boy who calls you Auntie? Oh, well. 
Apropos, did you hear about that consul swipe in Florence? That Mrs. Rawlings. Now it seems that her chauffeur, whom Chris knew personally rather well, is going to be the pardon. one who... You're Mrs. Henry Lester, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Will you excuse us? Oh? Oh, yes. <laughs> Chris, come along. You can help me choose the shoes for this evening. He's got terrible manners. But a wonderful taste for really dramatic shoes. <laughs> Au revoir. Come along, boy. Oh, what a nasty boy that is. Monte Carlo Parasite. I thought you'd like to be interrupted. Yes, thank you. I was just going to lunch. Uh, my name's Stevens. I knew your husband. Oh. Yes, we were at Oxford. I'm a lawyer, too, though not so eminent as your husband was. I do little jobs here for the English community. I, I live in Monte Carlo, you know, it's, it's, well, it's convenient for a bachelor. Mrs. Lester, do you know many people here? Oh, I'm afraid not. Well, then perhaps you'll dine with me this evening. Later, we might go to the casino. I am a little tired. I... No, I wish you'd come. You know, one can get lonely in a hotel. Downstairs, about eight. All right. Thank yeah. you. I suppose you've been here before. My husband brought me once or twice, but we didn't play much. Didn't he approve of it? Yeah. He was careful. I wish I were. You know, every time I win a case, I come in here with the money to turn it into a fortune and end up frantically looking for another case. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I guess. The pleasure of watching someone else lose your money. It's hard to understand. This is where the regulars play. You know, these people live in a world of their own. They've all got wonderful systems based on the higher mathematics. In theory, they all ought to be millionaires. But most of them work here all day for the price of a room and a bowl of fish soup in the evening. Would you like to play? I'm not brave enough. Well, you think these people have courage? Why, they're terrified. Now, I mean, look at their hands. You know, you can keep your face still when you're gambling, but the hands give you away. Look there, that, that claw-like hand. Avarice, wouldn't you say? Yes, and that, that uh, loose one. Extravagance. And there's... There's a quiet one, calculating. <laughs> Thousands of varieties. <laughs> Look, I was going to play a little background. Will you join me? Oh, I would rather watch if you don't mind. All right, we'll watch. Yeah, never play. No, you go ahead and play. I'm perfectly happy. Oh, you're quite sure. No, oh, of course. I don't want to spoil your evening. Uh, don't, don't get too interested, or you might end up by being a gambler for the rest of your life. <laughs> you don't know me, Mr. Stevens. That's I never risk down. anything. <laughs> Excuse me. That's it, sir. It was then I noticed two hands so tense and excited, so desperate in their movement, that I could hardly tear my eyes from them. They gripped each other and they writhed on the table like animals. He said. When I could lift my gaze to see the face above those hands, I saw a young man in the grip of such a terrible passion that at once, as though I had suddenly seen into his heart, I knew that if he lost at the game, he would kill himself. That was it, Madame Monsieur. Yeah. 
I don't know how long I stood waiting. It might have been minutes or hours. All I know is I could not have left without speaking to him, and yet what could I say? That I knew he was going to kill himself? How could one say such a thing? But what words would enable me to approach him? Then, when it began to rain, and still he sat so immobile, like a statue already dead. I mustered up all my courage. Quickly, go inside. Go inside, please. I saw what happened. Who are you? What do you want? You must find shelter, please. I saw you at the casino playing. Yes? And you thought I might be a generous customer? But I don't... Well, it's no use, that's all. I couldn't afford five minutes with you. I couldn't afford five minutes of your love. But, oh, it's raining Get so away from hard. Me. Find the man who's winning. Where, where do you live? I'll take you home. <laughs> well, home, right here, right here in the rain. But you must move. You can't. And where have you gone? Back in the casino. Can't you smell the money? It's all in there. Oh, you don't understand. I am not. I appreciate your interest, my dear. But I haven't just lost my pocket money or three days' holiday. Don't you understand what I've lost? What? Everything. But you must have a room somewhere. I left it this morning. I sold my luggage. My luggage for number 17. Now, please, please, I'd like very much to be alone. Go away! Why not? <laughs> there. Oh. Yes, I'm not 
chez vous, un petit hôtel. Un hôtel yes. uh, Hôtel Le Grand, hein? Yes, yes, oh. very good. Find your room for tonight, and then tomorrow you can go home. Home. Home is a long way. Where? America. Can't go there tomorrow or any other day. I don't want to see it ever again. You'll feel differently when you've slept. In the morning. There won't be a morning. Well, of course there will. But you must have. You must have something left. I don't gamble like that. Have something left that's not gambling to risk, but you can afford to lose. But I don't know. Thank heavens, I don't know. Thank heaven. You have to risk everything to win everything or nothing. Nothing at all. Driver! Hurry up, please. Would you show him the hotel, please? Uh, this is this is enough money for the room. It is not my metier, madame. Mais qu'est-ce que vous demandez? Je ne peux pas laisser le cheval. All right, all right. Wait for me. Come. No, wait, driver, driver, wait for me. More than you bargained for. Come on. No, I can sleep here. It's we fine. have to get your room. Pull yourself together. Come. Monsieur, vous avez une chambre? Une chambre, oui, number eight. Oh, you speak English. Well, my my uh, my friend uh, needs a room. He's not feeling very well. Well, Could you show him? Let's talk, Madame. You want to spend the night? Voila, the key. We want some tea. Tea? Ah, oh, c'est merveilleux. and sleep. I'll take care of the bill. And tomorrow I'll find a way of helping you. Tomorrow I tell you there won't be any. But, no. I understand. <laughs> no money, no love. Well, go on back to the casino, darling, and find another customer. I'm a respectable woman. Are you? My late husband was a lawyer, and I have two sons that are... Is that so funny? Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. You're going to be one of the other kind. What kind? One of the old ladies with bent fingers whose rings wink at the young men waiting at the bar at the Hermitage. Drink this. It'll warm you up. There. There, it's hot. It'll be good for you. You're 
Why are you bothering? Do you want me to stop? That's no, cheating. What is? It's moving the stake. It's adding to it when they've already called out the number. You don't understand, do you? Oh, you're a nice, ordinary lady, and you don't understand Please, anything. Drink oh, I don't anymore. Want it. Do you think you can stop me? We'll be empty in the casino now. You know what happened to my luck tonight? You were watching me. You were watching me. You got between me and my luck, yes. You got between me and my winning. Well, you won't get between me and my losing. Oh, please, please, please leave me alone. Stop it. Take this off your wet. Oh, does it matter if I catch a cold before I put a bullet in my head? You're not going to do that. Why not? Because death is no answer. Death... What do you know about it? I watched my husband die. And one time my son was very ill, but I never thought he would die. And then one evening I brought him his soup. And he was so ill, he shouted at me and he bit he me. He did. Did he do he that? He was so ill, he bit but he me. he recovered, didn't he? Yes. And now you think you're going to help me through my sickness, if don't you? If you let me... No, because as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to recover. Oh, you're a child. Do you think you are the only one who's felt such pain? that you wanted to destroy yourself. No, you're not. We've all felt that way. Even ordinary people like myself. And lonely people. Oh, is that why you brought me here? Because you're lonely? Oh, oh, you're a child, a child. You think a child... Ah! No, no, please, no, no, no. 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 a chance, and a million a chance, Give me. Give me and a zero the... hardly ever comes up, you know. Give you see, oh. you were lucky for me. You were lucky for me. Oh, oh please. Please, don't leave. Please. You must rest. You're wet too, huh? Yes, a little. Yeah. What's the matter with me? How could I let you stand in the rain? Well, it doesn't matter. No. Then go to sleep. No, don't go. I must. Please, no. I, I can't be alone. I'll stay a little while, but don't talk. Uh, I've never seen anyone look so beautiful. Do you mind if I say that to you? You must sleep. You see, if I say it, I'm not alone. I can't be alone. I, when it's dark, I... You see, you're lucky for me. I'm lucky for...
I awoke from a heavy sleep. At first, I tried to persuade myself that I was dreaming. Yet, how could it be a dream? Sunlight was streaming in through the window. From beneath arose the noise of the street. I only had one wish, to die of the loathing and the shame that overwhelmed me. I cannot tell how long I lay there. The dead in their coffins must lie like that. I had to dress and escape before he awoke. That he must not see me again. That I should not have to talk to this stranger ever again. Escape. Back to my own life, my own hotel. As I moved to the door, I could not resist the impulse to take one last glance. Suddenly, I was no longer ashamed. I was proud to think that thanks to me, thanks to my self-sacrifice, the young man was lying still and serene, and not dead with staring eyes and shattered skull. Oh, don't speak. Don't say anything. I'm leaving now. You remember we made plans for you. Will you come to the little cafe at the ground I made? At 11. Will you be there? I would like to cash a check. Oui, madame. But, madame, it's a very large amount. We don't usually cash such large checks. Could you speak to the management? Maybe I could... Good morning. Uh, oh, good morning. Can I help? I was trying to cash a check. It's a very large amount. Well, tell Monsieur Duval that I'll personally guarantee madame's check. Oui, monsieur. Would you bring it into the little cafe? Oui, madame. How much is it for? Five thousand francs. Five thousand? Oh, you've been gambling. <laughs> you know me. I don't gamble. Would you like my tongue? It's a week old. But I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to read a newspaper knowing all the dangers are seven days old and over with. Mr. Stevens. Yes. I would like... Uh, Mrs. Lester. No. No, no miss. I, I wanted to tell you, I'm sorry I left you so suddenly last night. No, no, no. No, it was my fault. I was too busy losing money. <laughs> well, what happened, Mrs. Lester? One minute you were there and the next... Well, I went home. I didn't want to interrupt your game. I had a headache. And... Oh, but you must always interrupt me when I'm gambling. <laughs> Think of the money I'll save. <laughs> he's, um, he's an American, isn't he? Who? This headache of yours. Extraordinary, isn't it, how easily one falls in love in the south of France? <laughs> oh, I do it all the time. Oh, but, but that's absurd. Well, this has nothing to do with love. I'm sorry, I'm joking, really. Oh, I... Was I rude? 
And I don't think you understand people very well, Mr. Stevens. And particularly, you don't understand me. You are insinuating something that could not possibly be true. Oh, well, I didn't mean to disturb you. When I followed that boy last night from the casino, I was not in love with him. For me, that sort of emotion is over. I, I can't exactly explain why I followed him. I, I knew I, oh, I sensed that something terrible was going to happen to him. I believe something terrible is his destiny. You're too cynical, Mr. Stevens, and you categorize people. You don't allow for, for change. You know, I recently helped an Englishman to keep alive. He was tried down here for murdering his wife. I saved him from the guillotine. He wasn't grateful, though. He shot himself a month later. You know, I, I honestly believe it was wrong of me to have interrupted his destiny at all. You think you'll do better than I did? I know I will. Good morning. your present. I couldn't buy you anything. I picked them on the way over. That doesn't matter. They're lovely. Madame. Oh, thank you. I would have liked to, to bring you something beautiful and expensive. I, I don't need such things. You deserve them. Last night. Oh, no, please. Oh. Please, I want to talk to you about that. We'll never refer to last night anymore. That's over now. It was... We're different people now. Tell me your name, but just your first name. Paul. Mine is Claire. Well, Paul, we're friends, and I want to help you. Well, there's no reason for you to help me. But isn't it enough that I want to? Can't you accept that? <laughs> what can I give you? Nothing. Just the pleasure of letting me give you... today, Paul. Something that, that you'll enjoy. All right, what would I enjoy? Well, there are other things beside the casino. Such as? Well, why don't we go on a picnic? Picnic? Yes, you know what that is, don't yes, you? Yes, we had an English governess. She used to take us out to eat little sandwiches in uncomfortable spots. <laughs> well, no sandwiches, I promise. But wine and uh, cheese and pate and... I don't have any credit in the market. I'll buy it. I have to keep you alive. I wanted to ask you something, Paul. You said... Last night, you said that you could not go back to America. Good morning. You had bad luck last night, hmm? And you? Not so marvelous. <laughs> but tonight, you'll be in the casino tonight? No. But you must. It's the third of the month, don't you see? Three into 365 goes 121 and two thirds. Last night, there were 21 combinations of red and even. Two, one, and five are the numbers. And then, what do you do when you win? Win? Well, I will have the money. And then put it, bet it all another evening. But certainly, and win more. 
And then? I do not understand. The wheel is always there. Fortunes are to be made. <laughs> He's crazy, you know. He's completely crazy. Uh, you, you can't win betting on days of the month. That system... Come. It's time to go. She didn't waste much time. I don't blame her. He's rather special, just interesting hands. The porter was bringing her money. Great big envelope, Auntie. Auntie, Auntie, Auntie. You don't get much down here without paying for it. But such an enormous envelope, Auntie. Pig. And the tablecloth. I'm efficient, don't you think? Oh, should we have some sausage? Thanks, thanks, thanks. No, I don't think I'll be that hungry. Oh, yes, certainly you will. You'll see. Yes, you see? Oh, isn't shopping wonderful? Baguette. You haven't done it before. My husband didn't want me to. He said it wasn't my place to go and argue the price of apples. Yes, yes. Come here. Decent here. Oh, I have a real talent for marketing. Don't you think I have a talent for it? Oh, it's going to be a wonderful day for us. I swear. Cross my heart. Madame? Monsieur? And where shall we go? Oh, to the mountains. Yes, si bien, madame. Hello, mon vieux. Oh, are you tired? Oh, no, no. We can try a few more. Spots. No, we don't have to. I love this. Do you? Oh, let us stay here. Driver? Driver, we found it. Will you wait for us? We don't have any cops. No cuts. Oh. <laughs> now, what were you saying about shopping efficiently? Well, up to a certain point. There. Uh, oh. <clears throat> you know, when we stay here, I mean... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> when we stayed here, I mean, when I stayed with my husband, we used to take a drive every day, every day up in the mountain. I mean, we had a driver with a little red beard. My husband trusted him. Monsieur Le Barbrouche, he used to say. Oh, I haven't seen him. He probably isn't here anymore. I uh, probably tried his luck at the casino one night, lost, and drove his carriage over the cliff. Oh, Paul, don't talk like that. Mm. I'm sorry, Anna. What else did you do? Well, sometimes we danced in the evenings. You sound as if you were happy with your husband. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, is that so unusual? Oh, no. Was it exciting being married to him? Exciting, perhaps not, but it was safe and secure. Well, tell me about that. Well, my husband used to discuss everything with me, to see if we did right about the children, the house, everything. And he... Well, we didn't bother much about other people. He used to come home late in the evenings, tired after his cases, and... He, he spent the whole day with... All kinds of unfortunate people, and he used to say they're coming home. Did he tell you about them? About what? The unfortunate people. No. No, they were thieves, criminals, people like that. He said they, they came from a world I'd never understand. And then some years ago, he became ill, and uh, he carried on just the same. Getting the thieves sent to prison? No, he, he was a very sympathetic man. Yeah, but, I mean, what else did he do besides uh, getting people sent to prison? He played the piano, and very well, too. <laughs> oh, you can't lose much money at that. Mm, poor. Well, you aren't eating. Here, no, thank you. Have some more, please. No, I don't want... <laughs> Why are you angry? Well, why do you have to keep forcing food on me? Yeah, I... When I say I'm not hungry... I came to Europe to get away from meals at home. Turkeys, pancakes, blueberry pie, all cooked up with love, and my mother saying to me, uh, eat up, eat up, it's for your benefit. We can afford nice things now that your father's installed a hundred high-class baths this month alone. He, he does it for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I came to Europe 
to stop eating and to get an education. Did you get an education? Oh, yeah. And the design of casinos and the laws of chance. You know what my mother used to do? Every night, she counted out the housekeeping money in little piles under the lamp, and then she'd put it in a box and lock it up and carry it upstairs and put it under the bed. She kept her jewels there, too. Everything valuable had to be locked up and hidden away. You know, we have a room in our house where no one ever goes into because the carpets cost so much it would be a shame to walk on them. Oh, yeah. Everyone has a room like that. We well, have one, too. You can't open the curtains because the sun <laughs> will make the furniture vanish. Because my husband said it would fade the pictures. We come from the same dark houses. No, Paul. I was very happy. Oh, Paul, smile. Smile again. There, I'm smiling. Because I asked you? Because you asked me to. Sam, we're ready. Thank you. Madame, uh, je mange. Oh. You were the French are at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we agreed not to. What, be honest? You are so beautiful. Did your husband know how beautiful you are? I think he felt I was beautiful, Ida. Did he show you he did? Yes. Why do you look away from me? No, I don't. Uh... Well, face me. Now, what do you see? A young man. What do you feel? I feel... No, there must be no such feelings between us, Paul. Oh, I have two sons who are almost your age, and our lives are so different. I have responsibilities. It would only make you unhappy. Hello, c'est terminé, madame. Well, oh. where shall we go now? No, I, I don't know. You suggest something, anyway. Something? Ah, a wedding. I have a friend. He has a cousin. He has a boy. He has a girl. Do they they marry? And they would let us watch? Oh, madame. <laughs> In France, nobody cares who sees. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Philadelphia college dances with her. 
laughter and her bright eyes. <laughs> oh, look! Vanny! Vanny! Come, monsieur! They will not be there oh, for you! You must be there! Oh, but they will be there! Something to hold on to a girl like this. <laughs> now, my wife, monsieur, my wife, my she, wife. she has a pair of knees. They stick into me at night. And her nose, she has a nose like a pigeon. <laughs> oh, Poulet, Poulet, Poulet. Monday, 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 Monday. Why, is it not good enough for you? You are too grand for us, huh? An English lord, huh? No, <laughs> Let me help you. Uh, it's time for the casino to open. Oh, no, no, Paul. No, I'm always there. I have to be there when it opens. It's empty, then. It's a lucky time. Only the regulars are there. It's lucky. It's empty. I need something to play with, though. I need something to risk. Did you see the cross on the neck of that fat woman? No. Well... Cross like that. All made of jewels, bought with wash basins. But what do you mean, Paul? What? It belonged to my mother. She kept it locked away under the bed. A great jewel, all red and winking up at you when the box was open. <laughs> On the night before I was ready to go to Europe, my friends took me out and we gambled. I didn't want to play. I, I was ready to go to Europe to study, to work, to see the churches and the museums and to come home full of postcards and memories and stories for my mother and the doctor's daughters. I, I didn't want to play. But I did and I, I lost. I lost everything, everything. Out of the game, I... I went home. Yes, after the game, I went home. I, I went up to my mother's bedroom. I remember she was sleeping. I pulled the box from under the bed and I took it upstairs to my room. I got a knife under the lock. And there it was, a great hidden jewel she was afraid to wear. To pay for my fare and it lasted three weeks at the casino. You see, I'm not only a gambler, I'm a thief. That's why you can't go back. You're afraid because you stole. I'm afraid if I go back. They'll forgive me. Yes, they'll forgive me. 
And they'll feed me, and they'll look after me, and soon I'll be married, and I'll have dark rooms of my own. If only I could win at the casino. No, listen, Paul. That is, that is not the way. Every time you gamble and lose, it binds you only more to your home. No. I could win enough. No, no, no. It'll only destroy you. Listen, you said you came to Europe to get an education. Do you still want that? Do you still want that? If you do, go to Paris and I'll give you the money. I'll give you the money. No, no, yes. no, no, no. Yes, Paul, it is easy. It no. is easy for you. No, me. I can't take money from you. It is your only oh. hope. I'll pay you back. Yes, I'll pay you back. You can trust yes, me. Yes, I, I, I know I can. But Paul, promise me one thing. Promise me that you'll never go back to the casino. I swear. I solemnly swear. By God, uh, Whoever sent you running after me, I won't go back to the casino. I swear. I solemnly swear. Before God, by last night when I nearly died. By last night. I won't go back. I'll never go back. Madame. Yes. Is there a train tonight? 6.30 is the last train. 6.30 is half past five. Do you wish me to reserve seats now, yes. Madame? One seat. One single seat. Single to Paris. Thank you. Hello, Pierre. Donnez-moi, monsieur, les dondonnières à la gare, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Paul, please. No, I can't. Oh, Paul, I booked a seat for you on the train. It leaves at 6.30. You have to catch it. You'll be in Paris in the morning. If only I didn't have to take money from you. But you must take it, don't you understand? Mm -hmm. If you don't let me help you, the whole of last night becomes. All right. I'll write you a note. I owe you. Will that be all right? Yes. yes. I owe you 5,000 francs. Well, let me put my address no. on it. Oh, no. No, no, you must forget me. And forget the casino, forget last night and today, and go to sleep on the train and wake up in Paris. I'll never forget you. You better leave me now. I don't know what to say. Well, neither do I. I'm not very good at saying goodbye. When I took my children off to school, I stood on the platform, and we didn't know what to say. And we, we only waited for the train to start. But didn't you? What? Kiss them goodbye. Goodbye.
all winter. I wondered who it was for. What, Mr. Stevens? One seat on the train to Paris. Two, madame. Quinty two. Je vais vous laisser mon adresse plus tard. Oui, madame. May I ask what you're doing? I'm going with Paul. I see. Now, do you... And I don't have much time. It might be wiser if you took time to reconsider. Oh, please, I, I have to... Run to the station, go with him to Paris, then what? Spend the rest of your I life... I love him. Love him. I respectfully submit you've known him for less than 24 hours. You think that needs time? It takes as long as it takes to move your hand and open your eyes. As long as the pause between taking your breath and letting it out again. You told me what you felt was pity. You were saving a drowning child. I was lying to myself. A little while ago when Paul left this room, I realized something. I'd asked him to go. But when he did, I was wounded. I didn't want him to leave me. And I know now that if he'd asked me, I would gladly have gone with him anywhere. And you'll do it now because he was so inconsiderate not to have asked you. He respected my wishes not to. And one thing more. Have you thought of the dishonor this could bring on you? On your family, on your children? I don't care what people might say. And as for my children, they are old enough to understand. Oh, I have my own life to live. <laughs> It was my fault. No. I delayed you. No, no, it was right. I was saved, really. Saved by the timetable. 
I think I went a little mad in the hotel. I can't imagine what I said to you, but did I sound like that, a little mad? Not altogether. I mean, he's young. He's very young and he must make his own life. It all was absurd. People, people might have mistaken him for my son. Madame Lester. I was seeing off some friends and I saw your young men go. Oh, never mind. You'll have a nice uninterrupted sleep tonight. Oh, you fell in love and tried to reform him, huh? <laughs> That's a mistake. If we change them into good citizens, they don't need us anymore. Us. Our nice fat purses. Oh, but we love our little reptiles. I fell in love with Christoph the first minute I saw him in a cafe. I was filled with revulsion. It was not true. Paul and I were not like that. Yet I felt I had to cleanse myself of the words this woman had spoken. What I did then, I did in a kind of madness. I went to revisit the places Paul and I had been that day. We come from the same dark houses. No, I was very happy. Smile, Paul. Smile again. There, I'm smiling. Don't you? 5,000 francs, all right. Here, yeah. oh, take, take, take it back. I don't want your pity. Find someone else to pity. Eh? Oh. Leave me alone. Oh. Casino, from the country, from myself. Every sound echoing. Away, away. were my 24 hours. 
When I reached my home, I had only one desire, to wash myself clean, body and mind. I thought I'd never be able to do it. Did you see him again? No. Mr. Stevens came to see me some years later. He said they found a young American dead outside the casino. Paul? Paul. That was his name. And in a very little time, I could hardly feel anything. Slowly, not being in love becomes a great relief. Very much, Helen, like a long journey one doesn't have to take. But weren't you grateful? Grateful that you spoke to him. Grateful that it all happened. That you had that day in your life. Wasn't it worth it? 